Hey guys, Luke here. Just wanted to share with you a little bit about myself, things I get up to when I'm not in the studio. I'm a hemp farmer. Going into my third year, we started the New Paradigm Hempery in the Water Valley area two years ago. So if you're ever looking to get out of the city or out of town onto the land, assuming we can do volunteering and touch each other and see each other, send me an email. Let me know. Spring is not far away. We're gearing up for our third season at the Hempery. We take our hemp stuff and we've created with my partner and I, Fifth Meridian Hemp. You can find our products online. You can find most of our products at Two Pharmacy and you can always email me directly. Let me tell you a little bit about what we got. We got hemp seeds, we got hemp coffee, we've got two kinds of protein. All of our products are sustainably grown and locally grown. We also have products that are strategically designed for zombie apocalypse so they can store for months and even years. And they're 15 bucks each or three for 40, so good value. Feel free to contact me to stock up if that's something you're interested in. We also have some other exciting products. Hemp Hydrosol, it's a digestive tonic. Super cool, one of our most powerful products. It's available at two pharmacy, 35 or 60 for the big one. And our Zombie Apocalypse COVID-911 friendly product we've just created, Silver Hemp. It's a surface and hand cleaner designed specifically for when you go out in public to keep you COVID free. Sending you love and namaste. Hey guys, Luke here. Just wanted to share with you a little bit about myself, things I get up to when I'm not in the studio. I'm a hemp farmer. Going into my third year, we started the New Paradigm Hempery in the Water Valley area two years ago. So if you're ever looking to get out of the city or out of town onto the land, assuming we can do volunteering and touch each other and see each other, Send me an email, let me know. Spring is not far away. We're gearing up for our third season at the Hempery. We take our hemp stuff and we've created with my partner and I, Fifth Meridian Hemp. You can find our products online. You can find most of our products at Two Pharmacy and you can always email me directly. Let me tell you a little bit about what we got. We got hemp seeds, we got hemp coffee, we've got two kinds of protein. All of our products are sustainably grown and locally grown. We also have products that are strategically designed for zombie apocalypse so they can store for months and even years and they're 15 bucks each or three for 40 so good value feel free to contact me to stock up if that's something you're interested in we also have some other exciting products hemp hydrosol it's a digestive tonic super cool one of our most powerful products it's available at two pharmacy 35 or 60 for the big one and our zombie apocalypse covid 911 friendly product we've just created silver hemp it's a surface and hand cleaner designed specifically for when you go out in public to keep you COVID free. Sending you love and namaste.
Welcome and thanks for joining me today. Um, just inviting you, if you're joining me for my vinyasa class, to really set the space at home. Um, if you need to take a moment to do that, we're going to start in child's pose in just a second. So you have a short minute and just trying to hold that container. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm Luke. If you haven't met me before, we're going to do about a 35 to 45 minute vinyasa. I'm the demo assistant today. Uh, so I'll be doing the poses and just keep in mind, listen to more of what I'm saying than what I'm doing. I might take the odd break. I might meet you in the next pose once in a while. So don't worry about doing exactly what I'm doing. Move through the poses and just listen to more of what I'm saying. Um, here we go. We're going to start in child's pose today. So child's pose, lots of variations, really wide knees, knees a little closer together. Find your favorite knees, find the bum going back, find the heart reaching forward. And you may or may not have done a little vinyasa or sorry, a little meditation before our time together today. Um, we're going to do just a quick uh, meditative breath. We're going to put our third eye to the floor and do the bumblebee breath, which is a mmm. I'm going to try not to do it too loud into the speaker. So just join me with your third eye on the earth. Let the sit bones go back and just melt. We'll get into the body in a moment. Just connecting to the breath, connecting to the non-form part of you. And let's take two bumblebee breaths together. Take a big inhale. Mm. One more, nice and long. Mm. And let's see where this move to the hands. Now we're moving into the body. Good old all fours. That's where we start. Wide fingers, shoulder distance. Come over them with your shoulders. Set your knees under your hips. Close your eyes and play a little bit. Some shoulder movement, some hip movement. What feels good in the body? Check in with the body. Where is tight? Where is sore? How do you feel? And then coming back to that strong tabletop. You've been here with me before. You can be on the toes. You can be on the tops of the feet. Whatever you prefer. I'm going to go toes today. Double check. You can widen the fingers a little bit more. Let's take two breaths of cat cow. As you inhale, we drop the belly. We stick out the tail. And as we exhale, we draw up and in. Take two more. Move with your breath. Big inhale. Drop that belly. Exhale. Draw the navel up and in. One more. Lots of movement. Big breath. Longer in the spine. Good. And here we go for the trusty tripod. So we put more weight into the hands. We root into the left foot. I'm going to move to the top of my foot for more balance. And I reach the right leg back. Let's draw the navel up and in. Take the left arm forward. We can reach more out through the toe or more out through the heel. We're just going to hold for two breaths. Open your chest. Stay strong and rooted. Good. And then coming down. Let's take the other side. And it's one step at a time. It's back to a strong all fours. And then it's back to a strong tripod. And the navel comes up. This engages the core so we don't wobble too much. We can stay strong. And we're rooted down. One more breath. And then we come down. Let's rinse that away with a cat cow. Be dramatic. That is lots of movement. Open. <sighs> Close and open the other side. Let's do one more. Big breath. <sighs> Good. We're going to go to hovering the knees. You've done this with me before, perhaps. Come on to the toes. Spread them wide. This is a toe opening thing. It's not even about the core. Make sure you're stacked in the arms. I'm readjusting. And then I push into my hands and I just bring my tail up so the knees are hovering. And feel into the toes. See if you can spread them wider. Sometimes the arms start to come up. Keep them down the back. Open the chest. One more breath. Good. As you're ready, we bring the knees down. Get into the playful side. Pat out the feet. Okay, let's do one more of those. We're going to come back onto the toes. See if you can spread them wider. Come back onto the hands. Even wider may the fingers go. And we come back up. This time we'll take the right leg back. 
Reach out to the heel and the crown. Let them be opposing forces. And then switching legs. So now we're opening up a little more core. Don't let the bump come up. Keep it down. Ten toes. Take a breath there. You might be shaking. That's okay. Come down. Patter it out even more. And then dog pose. Here we go. So onto the toes. Maybe you extend your stance if you have a larger dog pose stance. And we push into the hands. I like to keep a little bend in the knees to bring the heart down. And then you can straighten the legs. Find your spot. And it's a dancing dog. And we're trying not to come too far forward with our heart. We keep the heart reaching for the toes. The fingers are spread, spread wide. We're pushing into the L of the hand and dancing dog, which is moving. We're opening up the glutes, the backs of the legs. And then as you're ready, find a moment of stillness. And then find the top of the mat. Step there, jump there, float there, whatever gets you there. Push into the feet, come up. Exhale to the heart. Good. Staying at the top of the mat, I'm going to just adjust this way. Let's do three big swan dives. Here we go. Inhale, reach. Exhale, dive and fold. Always with the breath. You sweep up. And I'm rooting down with the feet as I'm reaching up with the heart. And then surrendering to gravity. So good. Last one. And just really melt into this one. Belly comes in, heart comes down, arms are heavy, head's heavy, everything's heavy. Bend the knees more. Find your favorite spot with the feet. Ragdoll, some side to side. I'm joining you back at the top of the mat here. And really what we're doing here is this is a check-in. How are my shoulders? A little kinky in this one, a little tight in that one, soft. How are the sides of the legs? How are the hamstrings feeling today? Is a little bend in the knee feeling a little better for you today? Find that place and then find stillness. Take a breath there. <sighs> and ideally, we're pushing through the feet, confidently rolling up vertebrae by vertebrae where we find Tadasana at the top of the mat. If you've strayed, join me here. Here we go. Sun salutation. You know the movement. Inhale, reach. Dive and fold. Inhale, half lift. And as we exhale, we bend the knees and we step or jump back to our plank. We find our plank and we lower on the exhale. The tops of the feet ground for a little cobra or maybe an upward facing dog. And then dog pose. And maybe dancing, maybe melting deeper. Feel into the body. Take a breath here. <sighs> And then stepping with the other leg, perhaps, to the top of the mat. Push through the feet coming up. Exhale to the heart. Good. Super sane. I'm going to do the arms down version. If you want to do the arms up version, that's fine. So in the arms up version, you're sweeping the arms up. Exhale, we sit down. So our feet can be more hip distance or more torso distance. And we sit into the chair. We're sticking the bum out. Not too much. Not folding, but sitting down. One more breath. Inhale, straighten everything. Exhale, dive and fold. Half lift. In our super sunation, we pause at plank. So when you get to plank, however you get there, pause there. Make sure the bum's not up too high. Make sure the belly's not sagging. Find the plank. And then side plank, I'm going to start with left. So I roll to the side. And I try to bring the hips up. So it's not sagging. I'm long and strong. Other side. And it's just a quick breath. Balance, control. Lower chaturanga. Maybe I'll do a knee version. Lower on the exhale. Tops of the feet. Back bend. Open the upper chest. And then dog pose. So that's a demo of a using the knees. And here we are. Let's take the right leg up. And then step through for lunch. So I'm bringing the knee into my heart. I'm reaching my heart forward. If it doesn't get there, I help it there. I push into the feet to come up. I sit into the pelvis. Straighten the back leg. And then the arms. And I can always put them down. And from here, warrior three. Here we go. We're going to fly. So maybe a couple steps. Rooting and flying. Or maybe one step. Take a breath here. Good. And then inhale. Step way back. 
Well, exhale through the vinyasa we go. So you could float a leg maybe or come back onto the knees. Meet you at dog pose. Thighs draw together. And if you need a child's pose because your dog pose is too much, that's fine. Meet us in dog pose. Here we go. Left leg up. Step it through. Help it if it doesn't get there. Come up into the lunge. Find the balance. Then the arms. And we fly long in the spine. And I can't see myself to adjust, but I'm keeping my upper chest open. And on the inhale, I step way back. And the ground should be close. And if I want to skip a vinyasa, I can push straight to dog pose. Or I lower. And I back bend. And I go to dog pose. And I'll meet you there. So find your dog pose and drop in a little deeper. Wide fingers. Open the chest and reach it for your toes. Move your sit bones back. Good. Join me here in all fours. Drop the knees. Let's take the right leg back. So we're going back to our trusty tripod. And then let's stack the hips. You know this one. It's a modified half moon. So we're doing a half moon on our knees here. So I'm side stacking. And I can look up at my hands. I can even close my eyes. And you can bring the left foot off the floor for more challenge if you want. Back to the hand. Back to the knee. Big breath of cat cow. Wash it away. <sighs> and the second side. And it's one movement at a time. Strong tripod. Find my balance. Stack the hips. This is my wobblier side. And this foot might sag. Bring it up that left foot. Good. And then back to the hand. Back to the knee. Big cat cow. Wash it away. <sighs> Good. I'm going to add a little camel here. So let's come onto our toes. And then walk the hands in. And before our camel, we'll do a little wrist stretch. So right hand. Turn it around. Left hand. Turn it around. Bring your awareness to your heart. Start to do some circles from the heart. Gentle. You'll feel it in the wrists. Try to keep all ten fingers grounded. Maybe switching circle sides. So you get a little clockwise, a little non-clockwise. And then once you find the sweet spot, drop in there and breathe for two breaths. Good, let's come back onto the toes and walk the knees in. This takes pressure off the wrist so we can come up and shake them out. And there's lots of shaking techniques. There's this one, I forget what it's called. There's a good old shake. Whatever feels good. Sometimes maybe doing one of these. One of these. Okay, here we go, camel pose. So I've got, you got a side view of me. I'm going to come onto my toes. If you're really bendy, you can stay on the tops of the feet. So first, first stage is hands, fingers in the bum, base of the hands in the lower back. And we're pushing the pelvis forward, drawing the elbows together, opening the chest, and calling it a day. For some of us, if you think you can reach for your foot, maybe try one, maybe the other. I'm still pushing my pelvis forward. I'm staying grounded in my knees and my toes, and I'm breathing. Good. We're going to find child's pose. So bring the bum back. Bring the heart forward. Weight into the hands. Knees wide. It's just it's short-lived, but let it be two juicy breaths. <sighs> bring the third eye back. This is our intuition center. Back in touch with the ground, which is our connection to earth. Just take a breath. Connecting to Mother Gaia. Reminding yourself that spring will come. One more breath. We're going to do one more camel, okay? So we have the three options. And those of you who are extra bendy, you can bring the heel of your hand to the heel of your foot. I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that one today. But it's the next level. Knees together. High kneeling. Pushing on the bum or straight. And if you have the real bendiness, it's heel of hand to the base, a little bit out of my pay grade. Open the heart, find your heels or your bum, pull the heart forward and back bend. 
and the bum goes back. The heart comes forward gentle. We're going to go to all fours for a big cat cow to wash that away. Here we go. Back to normal. What movement do you need? <sighs> a little shake is working for me in this moment. Oh, here we go. Dolphin pose. Forearms come down. And sometimes we bring the hands together. I like more parallel. It gives me more foundation. What works for you? Come onto your toes. Pick your bum up. And walk the feet in. Take one more breath here. And then we're going to push the weight from our hands into the feet to come up into dog pose. Find your dog pose. And then find the top of the mat, gazing to the hands, stepping or jumping, pushing to the feet. We're going to go for eagle next. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. So we're going to face you for this one. And I'm going to just do a two-legged so I can focus more on the arm demonstration. Here we go. Start with the arms. Let's go out on an inhale. Keep the elbows up. I'm trying to not have them sag in. I want to keep them up and away. I'm trying to reach the hands. I like to grab the thumb is my favorite. If this is too much, keep the elbows up and move to the self-hug. It's better than being like this. So if you can't get there, it's the self-hug. Maybe add the leg. Or maybe not. Here we go. Arms up, bum down. Arms up, bum down. Arms up, bum down. Find your focal point. What is that thing you're looking at? Two more breaths there. And into your heavy standing foot you go. Inhale, reach. Let's wash it away. Big dive fold. Exhale, find symmetry. Wash it away. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. And take whatever you need. I like doing little shakes. Sometimes a big breath. <sighs> Sometimes a little pedaling the feet, whatever it is. Second side, here we go. Let's slowly roll back up. And I'm gonna again demo the arms from the side. Let's go out from the inside on an inhale, right under left. So I'm keeping the elbows away from me. And then when the hands come from my forehead, I take them away. I grab that left thumb, and I'm up and out. I inhale them up, and then I sit. So we're opening the shoulders, sit more. And strengthening the legs, sit more. I like to ratchet my way down. Take two more breaths. Focal point, something in front of you. One more breath there. Good. Inhale, open. Exhale, ground. Let's wash away with a big dive fold. We're going to go down for six breaths. So really draw the belly in as you inhale. And then keep it up as you fold on the exhale. Ah, so the belly's up and in. Pretend you have a hamster in your crotch here and you don't want to squish him or her. So you're folding over the hamster. Maybe there's a big toe. Maybe you're feeling not so bendy and you're Grabbing for a knee, that's fine. Maybe you're rubbing your chest on your knees. Grab onto something, make a friend. And it's a lengthening of the legs. My sit bones are reaching up and out subtly as my heart is melting down. Two more breaths. And first we come off of any hands or let go of any toes. Big half lift. So we come up to halfway. So I'm flat in the back, and then we fold <sighs> before slowly rolling up. Okay, I'm going to take you through a sun salutation. I'll meet you at dog pose. Here we go. I'll start, and I'll meet you at dog pose. Inhale, reach. Exhale, dive, and fold. Move with the breath. Inhale, half lift. So we get long. Exhale, fold to plank. Maybe using the knees, maybe not. Lower on the exhale. Keep those elbows close, fingers wide, chest strong. Tops of the feet as you back bend, open that upper chest. I'm meeting you in dog pose, which is a resting pose for the moment. So take a moment to rest there. Good. We're going to find pigeon. 
So let's take the right leg up on an inhale and then bring the knee to the elbow. So I'm in a plank leg pose and I'm strong here. Let's stay here for another breath. Engage the core, be strong, and then bring the hand, foot across and set it down. So it's perpendicular legs. And you can reach the foot a little further back or bring it in a little more for that sitting up. Here's our blocks supporting us. Maybe interlacing behind the back. My foot is a little suckled. I can feel it. There we go. Foot shouldn't be suckled. And we're maybe even back bending into some fancier moves. Or maybe you're staying down like this because this is where you are today. Take two more breaths. Long in the spine for one more breath. Good. And when we change poses, we take the back foot back and we take the heart forward. Use the forearms. Use your blocks. If you can support the forehead, the back of the neck and the upper shoulders will soften. If you stay like this, all those muscles have to stay engaged. This is why we want to really melt. They call it sleeping swan because you should be sleeping and surrendered. You can also put a block under the bum here. If this is too much and you have any knee issues in your pigeon, figure four. So you're on your back body doing a figure four. If you don't know that one, you, you know that one. So just take two more breaths here. This is a this is a pose of surrender. And then we're going to go back to dog pose. And it's always one step at a time. Strong arms under the shoulder, engage the back toes. This gives me a tripod so I can push my way back to dog pose. I can shake my bum, I can kick my legs. I can do whatever I need to do to rinse all that away. I like to do these ones, they always make me feel good. And then back to strong dog pose. So the left side gets the same opportunity. Up on an inhale. Knee to elbow. Hang out for a breath. Talk to the camera. Talk to the person beside you. Down into active. So active, we're squaring the hips more. I'm square and I sit up. My blocks help me sit up higher. And if I have fancy moves, grabbing my right leg or some kind of back bend, that all happens as add-ons. And maybe we're just down here. Sit up a little higher. Tuck the tail under. One more breath. And then we transverse. It's a different kind of pigeon. It's the same pose. And my knees move away from each other. My pelvis drops lower. If I need that support under my bum, I have a block for that. Get to know where the blocks are your friend. Two more breaths here. And I'm supporting my forehead wherever I can. And I'm long in my spine. I'm reaching out through my crown the whole time and out through the toe of my back leg while surrendering. And oh, I feel something in my outer left leg. I'm breathing there. I'm communicating. And I'll meet you back in dog pose. Untwist, untwine, strong arms, under shoulders, back toes, tripod, dog pose. And we're going to find the top of the mat. Take a breath here, though. <sighs> and then step, float, push through the feet, come up. Exhale to the heart. And we're going to play with some crow pose or bricasana pose. I'm going to do my first demo facing you, and I'll do my second one sideways. So the best place to come from this pose is actually a crouch. So nice and low. And we start with our arms shoulder distance. And we put our confidence and strength into those arms. And then we keep our bum high. A low bum will splay out the knees and cause us to squeeze. A high bum will cause us to stack. And then we bring the heart forward. I think I got it. Take another breath there. And then take the yogi squat. Take two more breaths in your yogi squat. I'm going to adjust to the side. Here we go. One more breath in your yogi squat. 
and then inhale come up let's do one more and it's progressive strong arms knees to the back bum is not low bum is high trust i take my heart forward and if i'm worried about face planting i maybe put a pillow not a coffee table or a cat in front of me here and i bring my bum forward and i bring the toes together and i'm sucking in and then it's the yogi squat and i need the heels close so i bring my feet too close together see how my heels come up this is not the yogi squat i need them wider and you're gonna have to ask a little more as the bum comes down oh push into the hands open the chest take one more breath and I'm, I'm here with you and then inhale let's straighten we're gonna do another fold take the feet wide this time and then fold notice how it's a little different we already did one fold how is it with the wider feet i feel it in a different part of my hamstring what do you feel And we go deeper with each breath. It's not just hangout time. It's lengthening and folding. It's lengthening and folding. But subtly, I'm, being ex I'm exaggerating, but it's subtle. And it's present moment awareness. One more breath. Good. And inhale. Let's roll up. And we're going to go wide-legged. Bring your feet closer together. I'm at the top of the mat. I'm going to go he heavy into my left and then take a big step with my right. Join me sideways like this. And I'm not super wide. I'm not kind of wide. I'm like medium wide. Find your medium wide. Here we go. Inhale, reach. Bum back, heart forward. And there's so many versions of this pose. I'll play with a few. There's big toe grabbing. There's ankle grabbing. There's calf grabbing. There's reaching the hands behind and pressing the tops. There's reaching the hands down. There's bringing your crown all the way down. Whatever works for you. You can interlace the hands. Reverse prayer. Take another breath. Good. And then when we come up, we bring the hands to the waist. And I'm pushing down with my hands and my feet. And then I'm coming up with my heart and my head. It's conscious movement. And for the foldy people out there, it's a long way to hinge all the way back up. Here we go, warrior two, left toes. This is a lunge that starts with a nice long stance. So I'm gonna get even longer. I got my perpendicular feet, which is number one. I'm widening the toes on my first foot and I'm spiraling outward my knee because I'm opening the pelvis. I'm taking my right thigh back. I'm opening my lower belly, my middle belly, my chest. I'm not twisting over my front leg. That's warrior one. I'm just gazing over my front arm. Oh, I forgot to let go. Let me open that back up. Should be able to see the big toes. Oh, I'm a little low. Let's go other side. So I come in. I switch. And I don't keep the arms out because the arms come up last when I'm in the full pose. Spiral out, draw back, open, 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 open. And if you're feeling a little high, come a little lower. There we go. Remember not to twist at the trunk. That's not what we want to do. Open. And just the gaze is forward. Good. We're going to do an uh, inversion now. If inversions aren't your thing, go for another wide-legged forward fold. I'm going to demo a tripod headstand, which is our gateway to inversions. Let's straighten out the right leg. Let's wash it away with a big breath and a big dive fold. Ah. Good. So if we're new to inversions, our best bet is to start from all fours. Or sorry, on the knees. So here we go, tripod headstand. We did this last week. We're going to do it again. You can also do a headstand, a handstand. You can also do one hand in pincha, one hand in tripod headstand, which is kind of cool. Tripod headstand. Shoulder distance hands. Triangle. The number one problem people do with tripod headstand is they do the line. Don't make a line, make a triangle. See this nice strong shape? Good, that's step one. Step two, onto the toes. Walk them in. See how my bum is over my shoulders now? 
so my feet can get light and come to my triceps. And I might just stay here or draw the core in and stack. Maybe just stay here or do some fancy leg moves. Come up straight. Come into a little bit of a straddle pike. And I'm assuming if you're not inverting, you're in your favorite wide-legged forward fold. Take three more breaths. I'm just going to come down so I don't lose my breath. And child's pose can be a great I'm going to meet you back in wide-legged. My inverters slowly making your way down. My wide-legged forward fold friends. I'm joining you. Let's slowly roll up. We're going to do goddess pose. You guys know this one. And if you identify more as a god than a goddess, then just use that word. Here we go. Bring the feet in. The bum comes down. So it's just a wide-legged chair. I'm not folding. I'm sitting down. Maybe the hands together or the hands on the thighs. Those are easier hand options. Cactus arms or upper cactus arms. A little bit more. Close the eyes and move. Where do you like your hands? Where do you like the movement? A little bit in the shoulder, some bobbing, some circles. Stay low. Sometimes you'll end up getting high in all the dancing. You're like, well, this isn't so hard. Stay in the chair. Close the eyes. Find stillness. Connect to your divinity. The world has changed in the last month. Now is the time to really step into your power. Now is the time to find the divinity within you. What are you here to do that no one else can do that is your unique journey? Start preparing to do that more. One more breath. And on the inhale, we straighten everything. Go super wide with the legs and then fold. And you can side to side lunge, or you can do kind of some twisty stuff, whatever you want to do. As you're at home a little more often now, you're going to have to build your home practice. And the home practice summed up in one statement means doing the poses that feel good in your body. You're lunging, I'm talking to you. The poses that feel good in your body, that's really important. Those are the ones you string together into your flow. Take one more breath. Find center if you haven't. And then come all the way up. Let's find the top of the mat. We're going to wash it away with a sun A. It's our last one. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. I'm not going to come with you. I'm going to talk to you as we go, and I'm going to lead you with the breath. Here we go. I'll meet you in dog pose, our last one, and we're moving to the back or to the seated. Inhale, reach. You know the se the sequence. Exhale, dive and fold. Inhale, half lift. Remember that long spine. Exhale, fold. How are you getting the plank? Jump, step, elbows in, chaturanga. Lead with the chest, and then tops of the feet ground and open that same chest. Pull it between your hands dog pose wide fingers heart reaching for the toes I'm meeting you here and we're open we're ready so the heels might come down further if you want to be if you want to do one more dolphin drop in a dolphin reach the sit bones back imagine someone's adjusting you Good, let's find the top of the mat, step there, jump there. Sweeping up. Exhale to the heart. Good, we're going to do the quick zombie squat today. I'll do the side view. You guys know zombie squat. And this is a very zombie apocalypse appropriate pose. Zombie face, zombie arms, shoulders down the back. No earrings, keep them down. Come up onto the toes. And then we sit slowly. We're, I'm doing the quick one, so I'm doing the two, two breath version. So we're going to meet in Navasana, okay? I'm a little too far 
top of my mat. If you need the hands to help you onto your bum, use them. But if you don't need them, don't use them. Meet me in the vasana. I'm just sliding back here. Give me my little. So we have the knees together. We're open. Our chest is expanded. You might even straighten the legs. We're keeping that chest open. That's important. Okay, we're going to go straight into our next pose. This is a shortened version of my usual flow, if you haven't picked up on that already. Reverse tabletop. So I move the weight into my bum, and then with my hands that I'm putting just behind my bum, I'm taking that weight back, rooting into those feet, and my gaze goes back. Because you see, if my gaze doesn't go back, my belly doesn't come up enough. i got to take it back and open. Take two more breaths. Push into the feet. And when it's time to come down, we bring the bum back so far that you can see the thumb. So what I'm trying to do here is get you to stick your tail out so you're on the back of the bum. The flesh of the bum is behind you. Let's go for a big dive fold. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. And I'm a big fan, because I'm not super bendy, of keeping a little bend in my knees, because then I get kind of shimmy. And I can straighten. I have room to expand. <clears throat> For those of you who are bendier, grab a block, put it on the end, melt down, and go deeper with each breath. Shimmy your way into a deeper fold, surrendering. Good. We're going to do a reverse plank now. So we roll up. Our modification is reverse tabletop, which was what we just did. My hands to the same spot. Feet can be together. I'm a bit more of a hip distance feet guy myself. It's your practice. Whatever you prefer, go with that. Pushing into the feet and the hands, I stay flat. And if that's too much, I walk the feet in, which is maybe feeling better for me today. What feels better for you? Do that. And if you got fancy moves, add them. My bum is feeling a little saggy there. We push through four limbs to get away from that. We're going to do one more fold. So let's bring the bum way back. Again, the flesh is behind you. If you're not sure, just grab it. Pull it behind you. Be sure. Bombs of the feet together. And you can go a little further out. Like I'm a little more further out. Or you can do one of these ones. It's your practice. Here we go. Inhale, reach. I'm going to scoot forward. Exhale, fold. And really important to get long. And reach out so there's more room. We want that belly up and in so you can literally fold in half. So much to do here. You can open up the feet. You can intertwine like this. If you have this one here, you can push more into your elbows. What works for you? Just be there. You can also rock in this pose. I like to rock in this pose. Good, and I slowly roll up. And I help the knees to center. And I'm going to take the feet extra wide and do like a sitting windshield wiper where I just kind of drop to one side. It's really nice on the glutes. And it's a good check in. So I'm just dropping. And we're going to move from here into the back body. So we want to make sure we've got lots of mat behind me. I'm way too far that way. So I'm sliding forward, encouraging you to do the same. And then on to the back body we go. And I challenge you, you can keep your arms out forward and really engage the core and slowly roll down vertebrae, vertebrae, or just flop back. Have it be a little bit of fun. And let's do some dead fly pose just for fun here. We are doing the shortened version, so I'm going to skip some of the core. Well, no, before dead flies, we're going to do two big hearts. One of the things to remember in this time of change is we have to be the love. There's lots of fear. There's lots of change. So remember to be the love. Let's cultivate some of that. So the legs come up. We go wide. And then we sweep the feet. 
bring them together and come up. Okay, let's do one more. This one will consciously send the love out while we're doing the pose. Here we go. Wide. So it makes a heart. I learned this from a hippie one time. Come together. Then we come up. And then we do dead fly pose. Bringing on spring. Some people say it's not going to come, but I figure it must. Another remedy for these changing times is to remember that nature is where we all came from. And just because we built this artificial world doesn't mean that it's the end all be all. So go to nature. Let the arms and hands get heavy. Be in nature. Spend time outside when you can. Let's do a couple windshield wipers. So the idea of our dead fly pose is to really soften the body. Okay, we're going to do just one back bend because of our time. I'm going to do a bridge. You got to at home or a forearm wheel or something fancy. Now is your time. I'm going to do a really nice bridge. And I'm going to use a block. Bridge is a very block friendly pose. So I have my block. This is a standard, um, I think it's eight inch block. That's four inches wide. I squeeze the block. And even if you don't have a block at home, you should pretend like you do. That is to say, be drawing the thighs together to create that strong foundation. My knees are nice and close, or my feet are nice and close. I'm hip distance apart, so I can just touch my heels. Every body's a little bit different though, so keep that in mind. And then for my bridge, what I like to do is push a little bit and then draw my shoulders down and together and then come up into the pose. I'm gonna interlace the hands under the bum kind of guy. You can grab the ankles. You can even bring your hands to your hips and then we push. And it's all about the pushing. Open your upper chest, really ground into the foot girdle and to the shoulder girdle. Take a few more breaths. I like to close my eyes in these kind of poses and just push. Reach the belly button up. My wheel people, take a few more breaths. This is only our only one we're doing. So stay an extra breath or two. Open your chest. Open your heart. Invite the back bend. And then gently come down. If there's hands under the bum or a block somewhere, be mindful to move it. And then ask the body, what do you need? I'm a big bring in the knee for a hug kind of guy. I'm just a hugger. What do you like? Do you like to do a little happy baby? Do you like to do a little windshield wiper? What do you like? Wash that away. Good. And I'm gonna go from here to a windshield wiper. Join me here. We're taking the feet. We're on my side here, so I'm gonna go not that far to that side so I don't squish it. And this is a hip flexor. That's why we do the windshield wiper, which doesn't have not to yoga pose, but it's cool. We do it all the time. We're going to do Supta Baddha Konasana. I put my hands in a cat and I do this magically because when your elbows are above your shoulders, it opens up that shoulder space. And especially for the boys, that's usually tight because we've been doing push ups and curls our whole life, which has given us tight shoulders, tight upper backs. And the knees here are heavy to the side. They're opening up the pelvis. The story of our life is held in the pelvis. And the story of all our lives changing this year, a little more than maybe last year or the year before. So see if you can just open the hips a little more while opening the shoulders and chest. And we're going to skip shoulder standing again in the interest of time. We worked on our tripod headstand. That was our inversion for today. You can always squeeze. We're going to do a supine twist. If after the twist you want to squeeze the shoulder stand in, you can do that. But we're going to skip it. We're going to go straight to a supine twist. And that's just because we're doing the shortened version of the flow. For those at the studio in the past, we just add a few more sun salutations, supine poses. This is a nice 40 minute practice. Thousand versions of this pose. I'm going to show you my favorite. Knees close together, feet nice and close in. I'm going to go left over right. It's a nice tight cross. And then I take my bum and I shift it. 
to the right and then I drop and it's really important here I'm on the side of my hip my whole right s hip is down and then I can open to the other way and I can even take my hand and put it here with a little pressure and inviting my left shoulder to melt down it might touch or not you might be really bendy and your shoulder's been touching five minutes ago that's fine too breathe And we're just melting. I like sometimes in supine twist to imagine my organs are being squeezed like a rag and the toxins are coming out of them. Let's take two breaths, expelling toxins on the exhale. Big inhale. Toxins leaving the body. One more. Good. And as we come back to center, I like to ground through my hands, which gives me stability. And then I can untwist my legs. I can do a little shake. I can do a little dance, whatever you like to do. It's your practice. And then I cross it up. I've already scooted my bum because I know where I'm going. And I'm onto the side of the hip. That's really important. We don't want to be kind of on the left bum cheek. You want to be on the side of that left hip. The bum cheek should be fully off the ground. Maybe rooting down gazing over my shoulder this is my tighter side my other shoulder was pretty much touching this one's an inch or so maybe a half an inch i'm not judging i'm just melting that's the key to these poses you have to surrender this pigeon some of the other poses we've done these are yin poses where you stay for a few breaths maybe even a few minutes and you melt into them the surrendering is the work and we're doing this here at the end of the flow because we're done the flow. We're now just doing a last little closing so we can have the best Shavasana ever. Good. And as you're ready, untwist, unwind. Maybe use the arms to support. Do a little dance. Do a little shake. Do whatever you need to do. And we're going to do happy baby Shavasana closing. If you need to squeeze in a shoulder stand, now's your chance. Okay? You can just meet us in Shavasana. No worries. It's your practice. Thanks for sticking with me. Here we go. Closing the practice. This is our last active pose. Good old happy baby. So I'm grabbing from the outside of the foot. You can grab from the inside. I've seen people grab the ankle before. You can even grab here. Especially if you're feeling tight or you just want to play around. A little calf a little calf massage common to grab from the outside of the foot some rocking side to side super common some kicking with the legs no rules in this pose and there's a reason the little kiddos do this it's really nice for the spine it's a really great place to just exercise movement however the body demands it because it has no rules it can be fast slow However, whatever feels good, just play around. And what's most important with this pose and this last minute before we go into Shavasana is getting rid of all the movement. Particularly, we're doing a shorter flow today. So there might be part of you that still wants to dance and shake and do some stuff. Move it, dance, and then get soft. Come back to the breath. And I'm going to join you for the first Let's call it five or eight breaths of Shavasana. I invite you to take a minute or three. It's an important part of the practice. So good Shavasana is pretty simple. The recipe is surrender. Some people like their arms out a little wider, a little closer. Invite the shoulders down the back. Open that upper chest. Be long in the neck. Maybe your feet are super wide. Maybe they're a little closer like mine. You can also do Shavasana on the belly or on the side, the fetal position, particularly for pregnant women after the first trimester, that's the way to go. You can surrender in any pose. Some people like to do child's pose because they feel that protectiveness that is child's pose. 
take three more breaths together here closing the practice our time i invite you to take two more minutes so i'm going to leave you there and before we go in good yoga fashion i'm going to let you know that the divinity in me acknowledges the divinity in you. And now is our time more than ever to shine that divinity. Namaste. Wishing you a lovely, a lovely minute or two in Shavasana and an even better evening. Whatever you get up to, we'll see you next week. Bye for now.